Welcome to the Design House Digital Getting Started in Digital Scrapbooking Series. This is a quick video on how to make a basic layout using Photoshop Elements. I've used a free kit available to download at designhousedigital.com, so feel free to download the kit and follow along. I will be doing this tutorial in Photoshop Elements 8 on my Mac. The principles should be basically the same on a PC and with a different version of Photoshop Elements or Photoshop. To begin, open Photoshop Elements and create a new file. I have created mine 12 inches by 12 inches, 300 dpi in RGB. You can choose the background color that you like. I choose white normally. You can also rename your file now or later. What you see now is a blank white canvas. Um, it is considered the background, just like if you were pulling out a piece of cardstock paper. Now, the first thing that you want to do is open all your files that you want to work with. So, I'm opening all the papers from this kit, as well as all the elements. You'll see that when you open them, open them they show up on your screen. And here are the elements opening up. Once everything is opened, you can use Photoshop elements to your advantage by using uh, this project bar at the bottom. Now go ahead and minimize everything you just opened. And that will kind of go away. You won't have to worry about it. But at the bottom of your screen, you'll see this project bar that houses all the things that you've opened up. So. The way I like to start is with a photo. So I pulled out this photo of my adorable niece and I'm opening it just like everything else and minimizing it. And then you'll see it in the bottom of the bar and I just drag it and drop it into the canvas area. Now you see it comes up really big. This is printable size uh, and I don't want it that big on the canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and transform it. You can also use Command T and size it down. I'm sizing it to about 65%. Once it's sized down, you just click the, uh, there's a 65% showing at the top. You just click the uh, green check mark, check mark at the bottom and uh, it's all done. So then you can move this around anywhere, just like with regular scrapbooking, and drop it on the paper anywhere you want. Now the next step is to pull in a basic background paper. Now you can choose from any of the papers that you brought in and you'll see that it just went over the photo. So the photo is not gone, but you're working just like you would in the paper. Something can be on top of it and you won't see it, but it will still exist. So if you look at the layers, you can see now that the photo is on top of the paper. I didn't like that paper, so I went ahead and deleted it uh, and I pulled a new one in. So it's pretty easy to get rid of things that you don't want. So now I have this paper and you see I can put it above or below and it's just like working with physical papers. Then you can pull on elements and it's the same thing. And so you use your layers window at the right to move layers up and down uh, depending on how you want things layered on your paper. So then you can just bring in any elements you want and you can bring in multiples by just dragging and dropping them. And then you can rotate items by uh, looking at the squares when you see it, when you click on a box, and you'll be able to rotate the items by bringing up that arrow. So here I am bringing a duplicate. You move things around. If you don't like them, you can just delete them in the layers bar. So now I want to bring a tag onto this paper. So again, I just rotate it by clicking on the square in the upper right hand corner. And that's over the flowers, but I want it under. So I just drag it in the layers bar. And then I'm going to bring this cool transparent frame. If it was a little bit bigger, um, I could use it on the photo or I could enlarge it here. It would still be a fine or I could use it to highlight part of the photo, but I'm just gonna put it over the tag because I think it adds a cute little element. Okay, now I wanna add a piece of ribbon that wasn't in the kit. I'm pulling this from Karina Gardner's Oh Christmas Tree Ribbons, and there's this cute pink one that I wanted to see uh, on this layout. So again, I just minimize it, pull it from the project bar, drop it in, and there it is. Now it looks a little out of place. It needs to go 
on top of the other layers and uh, it definitely needs a drop shadow so I'll add that in a second. I also want to rotate it and so in order to do this I uh, do a free transform again and then in the upper part I make sure the constraint proportions is clicked and then I actually do a minus in front of the 100% on the width and that flips it horizontally. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this is just the quickest way that I've found to do it. Uh, so I wanna drop that just down below the flower and just move things around. It's nice, nothing's glued down, so you can move things as you wish. And once everything is the way I like, I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow. So you wanna to go to layer, layer style, style settings and you click on drop shadow, it gives you some options, uh, size, distance, and opacity. And I usually like my opacity about 65%, my size around a 10, and my distance actually at zero. I like my shadows full, uh, just right underneath that object. And sometimes it changes, it varies, but I, you know, I usually start there and then go from there to see if I wanna change it. Uh, you can then stay on that layer and copy the layer style and then click another layer and paste the layer style. And you can do this again, just go ahead and paste that layer style to another layer. So you're using that same drop shadow on all those three layers. Now I actually didn't like this drop shadow, I wanted it a little bit bigger. So I'm going back in, I can edit that drop shadow. So I go layer, layer style, and just style settings and then I have the, those same bars again where I can edit the drop shadow to be a little bit larger and a little, little less opaque. So once I do that I can hit OK and then I can copy that layer style. So layer, layer style, copy layer style and then click on my tag and paste the layer style so that you know those all have it. Now I like the shadow on the ribbon so I'm keeping it. Now I want to add a little bit of text to this layout. So I'm just grabbing the T and I click once and drag and let go and it produces this text box and so I'm just writing the most beautiful flower girl and I want the size to be a little bit bigger so I just select all the text and type in 45 point and then I select beautiful and type in 85 point. Uh, after this is done, I can choose any color I want. So here I'm showing you how to choose black, uh, but I think I actually like the pink. So I'm gonna choose pink and it will just give you an eyedropper tool. You can make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. And there you go. So I wanna move around the text a little bit and the easiest way to edit text is to go ahead and simplify the text. So the best way to do this is to go over to your layer bar, select your layer and click on simplify. If you're in Photoshop, this is called rasterize. Once you've done that, you can use the marquee tool to select the area that you want to move. Uh, then you just click the arrow and move the marquee area. And you can move it around anywhere you want, but be careful if you overlap something else, it will permanently alter the pixels below it. You can of course undo, but be careful when you're using that marquee tool. Now you have this really pretty word art that you can move around wherever you want. Um, but I think I want it just on the tag over here. So I'm gonna just tap it up there in the middle. Um, I also want another piece of text, uh, just having her name and the date. Once that's done, you just wanna go ahead and save it as a regular PSD. Now I like to make it smaller in order to save for web. So I go ahead and go to image, image size. The best size for web, I think is about 600 pixels wide. And just push okay, and it will bring up the smaller graphic. Then you can go to file, save for web. So now you've got these options. I like to save all my layouts as JPEGs. So just go click JPEG at the upper right hand corner and push OK. So that's basically a quick intro into making a layout. Uh, pretty easy to follow along if you grab that kit. Uh, good luck with all your layouts and check back for more videos uh, soon from designhousedigital.com.